Episode 32 of Strange Brow Radio. I'm your host, Tobe Johnson. Today's guest is Sarah Nash, empath, and, well, so much more than just an empath. She can see the non-living, and she's going to talk about her lifetime of experiences and the deep, deep rabbit hole that she's still on. So I'll tell you more about her in a moment. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Feral by Aaron at Etsy.com. This is your chance to own something magical. Yeah, I really mean it. Go on to Etsy. That's where you can find her. You can find a wide assortment of beautiful drums, handcrafted rattles, and smudge fans. So get your butt to Etsy. Type in Feral by Aaron, E-R-Y-N. Go check out all of the beautiful museum quality spirit tools. Feral by Aaron, Etsy.com. Sarah Nash is a proponent for psychology, especially the way of bioenergetic fields harmed by other EMF, the emotional manipulative frequencies. With her spiritual and intuitive guidance, she serves as the integrative practitioner working with medical doctors and other colleagues in the field of healing, spirituality, and metaphysics. She devoted more than 30 years to studying and researching spiritual phenomena, the paranormal, and supernatural, as well as the occult. Her therapeutic training as a practitioner through the Spiritual Response Association was completed in 2011, and she was personally mentored by the school's founder, Robert Detzler. She received her CPC with a special emphasis in the clinical spiritual counseling from Fowler Rainwright in 2012. She's a Reiki master, also a teacher in Egyptian tradition. She's an empath, a channel, and profoundly clairvoyant. She remains committed to teaching the importance of mind, body, and spirit connecting through what she calls the White Light Express Endeavor. Her involvement with the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine and through promoting alternative healings with methods in combination with traditional therapy using her personal healing modality, Cosmic Triage, trademarked. Sarah is a steadfast believer in the power of faith, healing, and miraculous manifestations that can bring about positive, focused intention. That, my friends, is Sarah Nash, and this is our conversation. Okay, we're here with Sarah Nash at the Manresa Castle. We just got here a couple hours ago, and Sarah was nice enough to join us. Hi, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> Let's start with a hi. The Corbin Dallas thing. <laughs> Sarah's here with her husband, Peter, and I'm here with Aaron, and we're just upstairs in what used to be, I guess you'd call it the converted chapel. Sarah actually worked at the castle, and she's going to be one of the speakers on the 25th of October at our live event here. But I thought it'd be a good opportunity, since you're a local, to talk not only a little bit about some of the local stuff, just lightly, because I want to save some of that for the 25th, but to speak a little bit about you and your background. And so tell the folks a little bit about Sarah Nash. I'm not even sure where to start. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to start, since we're sitting in a Jesuit uh, reform, Jes sorry. Mm -hmm. You're good. All right. You can edit that out. Right? No, you're good. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. A reformed, it, this used to be the Jesuit sanctuary. Yeah. And so uh, we're going to start with when I was nine years old, my mother took me to a priest, told him that I needed a uh, exorcism of sorts. Um, <laughs> at, at nine years old. At nine years old, because okay. I had, I had just seen uh, Lost Horizon. Okay. With Olivia Hussey, and, and she's uh, just amazing, and I knew that that's where I came from. Okay. And because the angels that I spoke with and the beings of light that I could see, it just seemed to me that that would that the the entire premise of Shangri La made more sense to me than the hell that I was living with my mother who was you know a piece of work mm -hmm. and um, my father God rest his soul was an amazing human being but nevertheless I would tell her 
the things that I could see and hear. Mm -hmm. And it really bothered her. So she takes me to a priest and uh, he shoes her out of the room and he asks me to sit down in front of his desk and he said to me, tell me what is happening. Tell me, your mother says that you're scaring her and other people. And so I told him. And so he asked me a series of questions and he came to the conclusion that uh, there was nothing wrong, that I was a gifted child. And he turned around and he, he, he took a book off of his bookshelf and he handed it to me and he said, this is your patron saint, Joan of Arc. And he said, stop telling people these things because they don't understand. And she ended very badly. So never speak of this again. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So he was actually the first person that validated me. He, he didn't scold me. He didn't tell me mm -hmm. that I was making things up. He didn't. I just remember the experience being very positive. At, well, except for Joan of Arc being burned. You know. She, yeah. yeah, murdered. All right, here comes our drinks. Here. Annihilated, <laughs> and so, um, and it was directly after that that I was shipped off to a boarding school in Michigan. So, okay, yes. so your first experience with a religious authority figure wasn't necessarily a bad one. It's not like you were rebelling against religion. You're simply just born. I love religion. Yeah. Yeah, I. I I have a degree in theology from Naropa University, and um, I was uh, ordained in Melchizedek. Aaron and I were talking about that earlier, uh, with the Sanctuary of, Beloved, of the Beloved from Dan Chesbro in New York. I'm also an ordained reverend in the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, <laughs> and <laughs> you know we, all, we want everybody to be touched by his noodly goodness. <laughs> have you met my Lord and Savior, Pasta? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking earlier today about doing the Paschetti Tarot. <laughs> I like different types of. <laughs> right. Any pasta, yeah. all of it. Instead of the major arcana, the major mipala. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, no, seriously. Wow. <laughs> Switched on a dime there. You have to. You have to stay. Okay, on so it. you go off to boarding school. Yeah. How long does that last? Just a year. I was just gone for a year. Came back to. Were you supposed to be gone longer? I have no idea. I okay. didn't even know I was going. I came back from school one afternoon, and my stuff was packed, and we were on our way, you know, in a big jet airplane to Michigan. And was I that just there. to get you out of the house because they couldn't? I have no they idea. Understand? We've never talked of it. Okay. It was just one of those things, and my childhood was really traumatic. I ended up going uh, when I returned. I ended up going to a foster home. Mm-hmm. And that was just really awful. And uh, there were lots of things that happened as a result of that. And then when I was 12, I went to go live with my cousins in Utah, who, uh, nice, great sound effect. That was a very good yes. sound effect. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. yeah, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I can blow some bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> the bubble cast. All right. But I, yeah, they were Mormon. And so, of course, I joined the Mormon church because when you live with Mormons, yeah. you're 12, you join the Mormon church. Yeah. And most of all, though, when I heard that they had the Melchizedek priesthood and that you could become a Melchizedek priest and go on missions, I was super jazzed. But then I realized that they don't ordain women as Melchizedek priests anymore. Joseph Smith ordained his wife, Emma, oh, as a Melchizedek. That. Yeah. Ask me anything about Mormons. I love them. Okay. I love them. And if I, if I had to choose a religion to be a part of it, you kind of dress like a Mormon right I, now, well, too. She's got on little, from the, like you know, you're on your mission. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> that's, that's kind of what right. I was doing. I am on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with Mormons, too, all around me. And they kept me out of trouble, actually. Yes. Like I would have been a hellraiser had oh, I not had right? those three Mormon friends surrounding me like oh I'm choose the right I'm telling you time. the greatest foundation of my life yeah. I, I tell you you know I was I became a Laurel Scout I was my Laurel's class president I enjoyed being a Mormon it gave me mm -hmm. a foundation of goodness and a belief in, in translating everything to its highest possible mm -hmm. power and so I will be forever grateful for that on the other hand, when I ended up getting a full ride scholarship to Western State, which is AKA Wasted State, my bishop told me, he said, don't go. 
Au revoir, Pee Wee. <laughs> and I have not returned. So you had no ambitions to go to BYU and set yourself up. I apart. got a full ride scholarship. Uh-huh. Yeah. I could have gone to BYU. I could yeah. I did a I did an um an I was my school yearbook editor when I was in ninth grade, so I went to BYU for two weeks to learn how to do that. Which is why I had my own very successful first online magazine called the His Quarterly. For four years it ran online. It was it was cutting edge. It was like mm-hmm. one of the first of its kind. What yeah. year was this? This was 2003 through 2007. Six, seven, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So not exactly the dawn of the internet, but... I oh, mean, no. Yeah. God, no. Yeah. No, no. But this was the dawn of... It was before issue. It was before forums. Mm-hmm. And, and it, we really, it was actually even I don't even know if blog, blogs hadn't even been... Blogs were well, just no, being Zanga. discussed. We were... That's, yeah, mm-hmm. we reconnected on Zanga. Peter and I. Zanga. So. Never Zanga. heard of that. It was... Like Diary X, MySpace. It's like MySpace, yeah. Yeah, it was it was MySpace for the the blogging. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Bloggers. So as you're with this Foster family here, are you dialing down your intuition part of yourself right now? What's going Absolutely on? Absolutely not. No, what they did do though was they took away my tarot cards, you know, things like that because you know they were quote unquote mm-hmm. instruments of the devil. Could it be? Hmm, so you were sneaking hey? these from gift stores, or how are you getting? No, I just no, absolutely not. No, I was given a deck of tarot cards by a friend of my mother's when I was twelve, and so I actually had them mm-hmm. when I went to go. I thought I was just visiting my cousins in in Utah, and I ended up staying with them until I turned eighteen. Mm-hmm. And well, for a brief period, I came back to California when I was fifteen, but that's that's a whole different story. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, when I turned 18, I got into an argument with one of my bishops about how the Holy Spirit is a gift for everyone, not just those who have had the gift of the laying on of hands. And he said, yes, that is correct, but those who are ordained in the LDS church, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we have it all the time. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Everybody gets to have the Holy Spirit all the time when they ask for it, when they need it. And so there was some element in there of some scriptural, because I, I, I attended a four-year seminary. I knew right. the Bible back and forth, and, and uh, so we just agreed to disagree. And one of the things that I don't like are when people say, oh, you just don't understand. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, try me. Speak it to me. Mm-hmm. Let me sit inside you because that's my gift as an empath. And I'm an extraordinary empath. I can sit inside you. I know what you're feeling. And I can pull the energy. If, For instance, if you came and sat down and needed to do a session with me. Mm-hmm. And you were going to ask me about your mother or your best friend or Aaron. I could sit inside you and pull their energy through you. Sort of like I'm doing... I call it like cosmic needlework. I can pull that through your heart and through your energetic center because you're going to feel your way and then I can feel what Erin's feeling through you and how mm-hmm. she can view that. It's, it's very, it's, it's, I think it's a very special gift and I think a lot mm-hmm. of that has to do with the fact that I was born deaf. This year, it's just decoration. This year has about 33% of my hearing. And as a result of that, I had to start looking at people as a very small child mm-hmm. and try to decipher what it was that they were feeling and saying. And I found that most of the time when people, when their mouths were moving, they were lying. <laughs> you know, hi, how are you? And all these spiky things coming off of mm-hmm. people, right? And, and it was just very confusing as a child. It's like, why, is, why does this person say these things that are so sweet and kind, and yet all I see are hatchets? Or, right. Or, 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 it was very confusing. And so I really believe that we do all have this gift and capability. Mm-hmm. And because of my distinct physiological, uh, well, you know, I mishaps, whatever you want to call them, disabilities, uh, I, I believe that I was able to hone my eyesight. I can see a spectrum of color that most people cannot. 
and and Peter knows this. He knows that I have been tested. Mm -hmm. um, I see a spectrum of color that most human beings do not. And so as a result, I, again, being born with this disability of not being able to hear, I can see and feel better than the average bear. So I'm very grateful for it. On the other hand, my parents were really, they, I ended up going to a Montessori school to learn how to speak because they didn't want to have a child with a disability. So I was not allowed to learn sign language and I was not allowed to act or be deaf. It was, it was just, they thought I was dumb. <laughs> she dumb. <laughs> because I just, I, I, you know, when I was like talking, right. and it still happens today too. People will say things, and I, I'll think, if you could hear what I hear sometimes, I'm like, <laughs> right. which is why I spend a lot of time laughing, right. which is good for me. But you know, it's, sometimes I'll do the, I'll lean over to Zen Master Ted here, and I'll say, do you want to know what I just just heard. Like, oh, I don't know if I know. <laughs> <laughs> Would right. you like some puschetti? <laughs> <laughs> it's R rated. So show. I hear the other world through um, this year, mm -hmm. actually. And I hear when I'm, you know, speaking with people, mm -hmm. tones and frequencies. Now, I have an implant in my upper jaw and my lower jaw, I have a bridge. Mm -hmm. And when we had that put in four years ago, my ability to hear in stereo was magnified. Because beforehand, like, you know, you, if a hammer dropped over there, I'd look that way. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So has it gotten progressively worse over time? Yes. Okay, and has that amped up your intuition? I believe it has. Yeah. And Absolutely. you have really strong eye contact with everyone. Are you reading my lips too? Is this part of what's going on? I read on? all of you. Right. So and you're reading the whole people. person, but you're actually want to see what I'm saying mm -hmm. as well as, okay. Yes, absolutely. I see colors. I see, and sometimes it's almost like cartoon bubbles. You know, it's like right. thought bubbles that come around. It's, it's very interesting. It's very beautiful. I, sometimes I wonder if what people would do if they could see the world through my uh -huh. eyes and feel it through, you know. I, I Sometimes when I go places and do things, I have to put a lead box around myself. I can't do large groups. <laughs> I mean, oh, I man. really have to just... You guys need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Feral by Aaron is also Faraday by Aaron, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So you feel that way all the time. You have this Faraday cage around you. Yes. You put it up when you leave the house. You take it off when you... Okay. Gotcha. Yes. Have you been to my house, Erin? Yeah. Okay. So you know how protected it is. Mm -hmm. When you walk... You're good. When you walk into my house... Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have gridded my house. And when I say gridded, I mean gridded. Mm -hmm. It is almost electronic. I put a lot of protection around mm -hmm. me because I see a lot of the stuff that people don't. Sometimes I see salamanders like walking mm -hmm. like little lizard things and it's just, it, in my world can be very strange. And you know, I, it, my doctor, she's hysterical. There's a group of us out there and a couple of them are nurses. We call ourselves schizodoodle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But, you know, so far we're not boiling bunnies or going after the Pope, so we're okay. Yes. Yeah, just say no to being bad. No. I'm, I'm well, yeah, today anyway. So as a young woman, you're growing up, you're at the dating age, you're out there going to college, you're meeting new people. How easy is it to break the ice? Or can they already tell that you're different? Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Right. Well, I know. I walk into a right. pow. <laughs> No, I, I went But you must school. want to dial it back a little bit to not scare away people that or are potentially dial it friends. Up full, right. Full Monty. <laughs> are you just doing active readings as you walk into a place like oh you got an yes. attachment. You look you're yes. going to have trouble in 5 years. I'm not worried about. It. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I often play this little game with my daughter who is also gifted. Right. And she's been pushing it away most of her life, which is fine with me because it's difficult to live this way. I mean, I'm blessed that I've been able to manage it from point A to point B, but that's because I have a very specific skill set. I'm a survivor of abuse, 
We're going to talk about that for a minute. Um, let's talk about dating. When I met the father of my children, mm -hmm. um, who was a wonderful guy. I mean, he was a wonderful dad. And he, actually, okay. <laughs> We're, we're friends now, mm -hmm. but there was a point in our life when he was a full-blown alcoholic and drug addict, and he beat the ever-living you-know-what out of me. I ended up, and that's how I ended up being mm -hmm. a consultant for the LAPD, working on some of their cases, because initially I had to attend a domestic violence um, when you go into the witness, not witness protection program, that's a different thing. <laughs> when you go into a like battered uh, women's protection program, program yeah. and you get a restraining order and you want to go through the entire program, they, they teach you self-defense, mm -hmm. they will represent you, they will get you help. Uh, but there, you, it's it's a it's a give and take thing. You can't just sit there and say, help me, help me, and be a victim. Mm -hmm. They, they really assist you and, and move you out of victim mode. And this is marriage number one? No, this okay. is actually marriage number three. Okay. Married my high school sweetheart. That lasted for two minutes. Okay. Yeah. I, Alan's a great guy, but we should, he, was, he was my best friend. Right. And she with was, all this intuition going on and marriage number one, two, and three, what parts are you are you tuning out? Because you kind of already know what's coming. How about my second husband who was gay? Right. And no clue. <laughs> oh, you had no clue. No clue. Okay. Should have known though, because shopping with him was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Loved him. Yes. Right. Yeah. No. I just, you know, he. Right. Lots of stories there, but I ended up working um, with the LAPD on a couple of mm -hmm. instances, and they don't call us psychics. They don't hire. Police departments, well, some do. Mm -hmm. um, I had been asked to do something for Whidbey Island Police. We haven't followed through with that yet. Um, but um, Recently? About a year ago. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 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 um. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you not say when you're on the air? Um. <clears throat> that is how I got from point A to point B with the LAPD. So they, you you get introduced to the LAPD by way of tragedy, although coming yes. up around the corner here is something amazing about to happen. You had no idea Correct. that it was going to take this huge left turn. Right. Okay. And, How'd that happen? That happened as a result of handing out flyers on the Venice Beach boardwalk. You handing out flyers. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, for, you know, mm -hmm. free hugs. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but... This really beautiful woman, a black woman, came up to me and she was going through some of the stuff on our table. And when she took off her glasses, I could see that both of her eyes were black. Right. I mean, and I know the difference between, yeah, I fell or I was in a car accident or I had a nose job or this is, you know, husband right. and his hand. And I went, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we need to talk. And as it turned out, she was a very, very successful attorney. And she did not want anybody to really, she just, it was, you don't talk about it. So as a result of that, we began a program called FEW for Evolving Women. And these were for professional women who were suffering domestic violence and because they had high profile jobs or their mm -hmm. husbands did or their boyfriends did, they right. didn't want to talk about it because it's, you know, that, that only happens to poor people or that only happens to uneducated people or that only happens to, you know, we, it just doesn't happen here. Well, of course it does. It happens everywhere. And now it's FEW and M. And because a lot of men are also abused and, and in domestic relationships that are violent. So they call themselves femmes. <laughs> it's <laughs> for evolving women right. and for evolving men. And so it's FEW and M, um, and, it's, and it's continuing on. And so we began that program. And as a result of that, the, the chief of police and, and, you know, you start talking. Right. And they're like, oh, well, you seem to be pretty intuitive. How come you know all this stuff? And I'm like, well, because I'm awesome. <laughs> 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 Remember to be an awesome at all times. Um, and so one thing led to another, and they brought in a whole bunch of clothing. They just, they just dumped it on a table, and they said, see if you can find the victim's clothing, just because they were having a hell of a time. <laughs> sure enough, what happens, 
And Peter has been a witness to this. He has seen me do this. I wish I could do it at the craps table. I, I actually I did try that once. Right. <laughs> it's not a, it's not ethical. Um, and I get a blue glow. It's like this an electric blue glow. It's a neon blue. Kind of, it's a very beautiful color, mm -hmm. and it surrounds something that is significant. Um, one of the cases that I was working on, uh, somebody had just called me on my cell phone, and that's one of the first instances that Peter was with me because it was an emergency. And mm -hmm. we were driving down the road, and Haynes, the road Haynes, um, it's right over by Safeway. And I saw it, and it was doing that glowing thing. And I said, and so I was telling the person that I was talking to on the telephone, Haynes has something to do with this. It's either Haynes, Alaska, not Haynes underwear. No. <laughs> Oh, it could have but it was the way it was spelled. It was H A I N E S. Turns mm -hmm. out that it was the name of the boyfriend of the person who had abducted. Um, and and it was just, the, the minute I said that they were like, okay, we got it. Click. That's all they needed. Really? They wouldn't yeah. give you any more. No. No. Yeah. No. But and that's then that's common. Now when I knew that I was going to be doing this interview and I'm doing more in the future, mm -hmm. I asked how much I could tell. We cannot reveal case studies. We cannot reveal who was there, what it was about. Oh, to me. Say, to anybody. Yeah, right. To no, anybody. no, yeah. I wouldn't because, expect so. Um, although I have signed some NDAs with my work, there are some cases that, you know, mm -hmm. just, but some of them, they are not yet solved. And mm -hmm. so there's, there's uh, information mm -hmm. that we, the vast public should not know. Okay. Trying to keep certain things. So that safe. was the first case of the LAPD that you worked when they threw a pile of clothes on the table. Yeah, they they were just like here. It was just it was one of those those situations mm -hmm. where I just happened to be there, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, I, I can let me see if I can help. Mm -hmm. They were like, go ahead. They knew me. Right. What they can knew, it hurt? Right. Right. Yeah. And well, uh, what did they know about you? I mean, that transition. That I'm awesome. Yeah. So that awesome quality, <laughs> it goes deeper than just like. I would You're sit cool with people chick. because I'm more of a mentalist at first. Than How I did they find out, though? Because I was working with other women. I was running domestic violence groups with these women. Right. And allowing them to feel that they were safe and comfortable. And then knowing information about their situations that just, it's, it's too specific. Okay. It's too specific. And they started listening. They started watching because, of course, they would sit in mm -hmm. on the groups. It, um, I went to school, actually, to become an adolescent criminal psychologist. That's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I wanted to work with youth so that before they got into the system and they had become institutionalized, mm -hmm. that they would be able to have some, some hope. And some, well, like you said, if you hadn't had that foundation of your friends in the LDS mm -hmm. church, and mm -hmm. the same for me. But not everybody has that kind of foundation. Not everybody has the ability to make good choices mm -hmm. simply because it's the right thing to do. Right. What is the right thing to do? There's situational ethics. And I can't always tell people what I see and what I hear, which is why I always begin a session. Mm -hmm. Listen, you know, I'm not going to pry. I'm not going to do the unethical thing and, and sit inside your mind and take it apart. It's like a Rubik's mm -hmm. Cube. Now, do you sketch out things as images come? No. To you? You don't, don't do, do that. that. No. I started doing that when I was in, uh, talk about being with my cousins. I started doing that and it scared them. I, okay. I would, I would it doesn't actually, help you at all get no. the message out. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Not anymore. I, and that is one of the reasons why I started using Tarot. Tarot. <laughs> my daughter and I had this conversation this morning. She's yeah. Like, why do you always call it tarot? Tarot. My friends like just a, look at me. It's tarot. <laughs> like an author. No, it's right. tarot. Right. Tarot. Tarot. Okay, tarot. You have tarot, tarot syndrome, yeah. Namast. <laughs> Namast. Namast. <laughs> Namast. Yeah. Okay, so you're using divining cards. Yes. And okay. so, and as a Jungian analyst, again, that's what I went to school for, mm -hmm. um, signs and symbols. Mm -hmm. So scrying, mm -hmm. scrying really helps me a lot. 
which is why my home is set up the way it is. I have certain images and things that I focus on when I'm working with a person. Describe to the audience what you mean by scrying. Scrying is when you're having a conversation with someone. And for Okay, for me, this is how it works. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, all I'll see is this pair of glasses. The entire room... We can, you can have all different kinds of things, but this pair of glasses suddenly becomes my focus, even as I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. or, and, and I will know that this, gla this pair of glasses has something to do, so that's one. So now I know I, I've, I've locked in on the glasses, and now I'm looking at your t-shirt, mm -hmm. and the spiral. Mm -hmm. on, on the uh, Bigfoot's eye, or yeah. his ear, the is his ear? Oh, that's the, the pineal gland in the ear, yeah. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. the, there you go, mm -hmm. all right. So I would open up a conversation with you, just, to, just like we did there. Mm -hmm. So something to do with the pineal gland and the third eye. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something that you learn how to put together, so I know then, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now, you have a problem with your third eye, brother. Oh, this is happening. Yes. You're doing a reading. <laughs> I have a problem with it. I wear contacts. I need yeah. a contact for that. You need contacts <laughs> on your third eye. Right. <laughs> right. So that's great. Yeah, so it has something to do with your third eye. Maybe it's opening up. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't have a problem with it. I just kind of looked at you, and I'm kind of thinking, okay, he wants to keep it shut. There's, there's a portion of... Mm -hmm. When I'm talking with you, like I see you reaching out energetically, and then you, uh, it's sort of like an, an, see an enemy, an enemy. Oh, an anemone. An anemone, thank yeah. you. Words. <laughs> right. Words. A no, see an enemy. Language. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a recoil. Like you get so far energetically, and then you do this thing. Okay. Yeah. So you're, keep, keep doing it. That seems pretty natural, though, doesn't it? To push in and pull out as far as like learning. I mean, it, it doesn't sound too abnormal. Now, you're not saying it's abnormal. You're just no. saying you notice it. No. Yeah. I'm just saying that for you specifically, mm -hmm. because you do this mm -hmm. um, with Strange Brow Radio, which is awesome, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank congratulations. You. It's really a great oh, cool. show. Thanks. I loved listening to some of the back episodes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, you got a gift. <clears throat> you got a gift. I got a gift. You got a gift. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 uh, George Norrie does the same thing too. By the way, you you kind of remind me of him. <laughs> well, okay, all right, I'll do something with that. He'll he'll do that thing where he'll sort of unravel it long enough, and mm. he's like, yeah, okay, no. It's 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 a push pull kind of thing. Maybe it's common for. Um, uh, you think it's a male thing? No, no, I think it has something to do with the, the work that you're doing mm -hmm. as an interviewer of strange and weird people. Right. I never thought of that. I'll have to think of that. Hmm. I'm thinking, thinking, <laughs> tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> well, let's go back to the uh, LAPD. Okay, all right. Yeah, let's go back to the LAPD. And it was, it was in that, that situation that I actually <laughs> I was able to help. And it was very successful, and they they were able to determine whose clothing was whose, and it and of course they couldn't say how. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Well, she told us. Well, who is she? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she has X-ray vision, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they 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 have their ways of working around the system. Mm -hmm. You know, experts say. 10 out of 12 experts say, you know, who are these experts? Mm -hmm. And they're psychics. We got them off of Venice Beach Boardwalk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Great sometimes you have to do that. Yeah. And I believe that it's, it's, you know, sometimes I want to go to Sherlock Holmes if I, if I could and just, you know, shake him by the shoulders and say, Watson was the one who was psychic, you bastard. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's one of those things. But you word, have to. Yeah, word gets out from the LAPD that you're authentic, that you've got this gift, and yes. now you can be utilized by other departments. Correct. And so word spread. Yes. And were they working primarily with you for a, a time, or do you? Yeah, well, for a while, yes. And, and was it, it was, constant? Was it just like, okay, we have another case, an unsolved mystery, blah, blah, blah? Oh, 
not constant, no. Okay. No, um, it really, I, when I moved out of the Los Angeles area and the Santa Monica, the Southern California area, I moved to Northern California. And there, what I call the, a period of time where we were just getting adjusted, and then there was a, there was a situation that happened in Monterey. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was called in by other departments to help with that, but and you say I'm situation because you can't say. I can't say what yeah. even what it's about. I know. It okay. Was, well, yes, I can tell you a little bit about what it, it was about. It was about somebody who was using people. Uh, they you know, even just now. <clears throat> right. Skin, human skin, was found used oh. as as um, displays okay. in a person's home. Where did that skin come from? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Someone got skinned. Yeah, okay. and it was it was a situation. That's brutal. Yeah. It puts the lotion on its skin. Right, that's yeah. where yeah. my mind went. Yeah. So wait, were you taken to homicide scenes? Yes. Yeah, okay. And it's nothing like wow. you see in the movies at all. Well, describe for what, what it's like. Because uh, you're seeing a lot. boring as, as heck. But wait a second, know. you're seeing things that other people aren't. Here are these detectives like... You know, being clinical about everything, everyone's compartmentalized with their job. But for you, are you reliving that moment? Sometimes, yes. And how do you react? How I have to be cool about it. And I just, and not only that, the people that are with me that are recording everything that I'm saying, it's, 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 uh, it's almost kind of like what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. It's, you, you, I prepare myself for feelings and sensations. And, and sometimes the sheer terror. And there's a, there's a smell sometimes that comes along with that, too. What, it's, an intuitive smell or an actual it, smell? Both. Okay. Both. Sometimes. I, and, uh, yeah. There's just some things there that... <laughs> okay. I can... When I walk into a room where this, the, a crime has happened, and sometimes a very violent one... Mm -hmm. I, I can I can sense the some shock and the anger and the rage, mm -hmm. and and sometimes just the downright is sometimes it's dark, and now, when I say dark I mean sinister. Do they notice you too? Let's say the perpetrator. Does he notice you walking in and and kind of? I mean they don't necessarily have had to pass on too. I mean you're trying to pinpoint what happened here. They're I've actually had them it. talk to me. Okay. Yeah, and that was one of the one of the more interesting cases where I literally had, and I've told you about this one, Peter. Um, <clears throat> I've I've had he was following me around, and he actually told me he had he'd committed suicide, and he was in a uh, he was in a Costco parking lot in a car that he had stolen. Right. And they immediately sent out, and they were like, "Yeah, he was there." Wow. Yeah. And I do work very well with victims of violent crime, people who have committed suicide, and people who have passed very quickly. And I'm getting very loud ringing in my ear, so that's also... What does that mean? The ringing in my ear, it's a very loud tone that happens, mm -hmm. and if it happens in this ear, it, it's, it means that it's, it's coming from and that's somewhere your deaf else. ear. Yes. So you shouldn't hear anything. Exactly. Okay. And so when I hear it from this ear, it means that somebody's thinking about me. And usually I've actually gotten my daughter's tone down really well. I can tell when it's her. And I'm like, it's always thinking of me. Oh, you yeah. can tell by the pitch? Yes. Okay. And I started paying attention to that about nine years ago. Mm -hmm. And Peter Frampton has, and I, I knew that I wasn't alone with the ringing in the ear thing because he sang in one of his songs in the 70s. There's a ringing in my ears. And I can't remember the rest of the... No, in fact, we were, I, I was telling Aaron about this too once, that uh, mobsters, there's one mobster in particular that was explaining that over a period of time, they would have ringing their ears and they attribute it to lying. They said the act of lying so much actually will make you go deaf and you'll just have tinnitus, whatever's <laughs> happening. I don't know if you'd ever heard that before, but uh, yeah. The, <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Everybody's lies. Right. It could be. Yeah. Well, so, it, well, that's interesting you say that. You say most people, when their mouths are moving, they're lying. Yes. But these are little lies. These are like, I'm protecting myself. I don't want to get in too close to, you know. To I think this. a lot of it has to do with social propriety. 
you don't walk into a room screaming bloody murder because you know it's just it's you, hi mm. how are you today mm. i'm fine thank you mm. you know do you like this do, have some bread <laughs> <laughs> right you know, it's like, hi how are you today i don't ask mm. people Sometimes they just start telling me. That's <laughs> right. The other thing. Oh my God! Is there... Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's hi. How mm -hmm. are you today? But see now you're a, you you are, you're very social. You're kind of a social. No, it's all this is an act. This is an act. I am totally right. INFJ. <laughs> but people want to reach INFJ. out. People want to reach out to people who are just like that anyway. But here you have this added bonus of helping them. So what's that like? I mean, do you ever feel drained? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. How often does that happen? Oh my All gosh. the time? All the time when I'm working and especially when I'm doing readings back to back to back. But for a period right. of from uh, 2013, um, actually it was 2014, 2014 to just very recently, I set aside five days a month to channel, just strictly channel. And I didn't eat, I didn't sleep very much, and I and it, it was a it was a process where I began really just reaching out with my mind and with my 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 being because I wanted to really go cosmic. I didn't want not that I don't enjoy helping people, you know, with regard to does he love me? <laughs> does he love me? <clears throat> yes, yes, he does love you. Um, <laughs> Wait, now, do you said that almost flippantly? Do you ever tell them what they want to hear? Just to get it, I mean, just to get it over with, just for the fact that never. just like, it, no. No. You're never tempted? No. Okay. No, that, that, no. Okay. No, and I was being very flippant. Okay. Because I don't do that kind of thing. It was one of my commercials that my daughter helped make for me mm -hmm. when she was going to the Art Institute. It was people would say ching. Yeah. There has That's to. That's where all the money <laughs> right, went. Right, right. Yeah. There has to be mediums and psychics though that do that. Tell of people course. what they want to hear. Oh, I don't know. You don't know them. I don't know. You if you they know that. that that exists though. I know that that exists. And what's your opinion of that? That's why people like me have it very very. It's 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 a very. It makes it difficult for me to right. say that this is a science. Mm -hmm. First, I'm a mentalist. I'm going to watch your body language. I'm going to look at your eyes. I'm going to see how I can tell just by a, a nostril flaring, a, an eyebrow moving, the head, the move of a head, the way the body shifts. And I've I've been so skilled at that, as from a young child mm -hmm. learning, for a lot of different reasons. A lot of it had to do with being safe. Mm -hmm. But part of that then is going, wow, I can help you. Mm -hmm. Because now I know who and what you are, why you think some of the things that you do. And don't ask me how I can rifle through that Rolodex of, of experiences in your mind. Sometimes it's like mm -hmm. looking through a viewfinder. Right. I see images from people's lives. It's like the, the old <laughs> viewfinder with the little, mm -hmm. you go click, click. Oh, yeah, yeah, click, yeah. Yeah. And you, I, I don't know Those how cool. many of your audience would understand. What it, no. Look it up on the look internet. Up ask viewfinders. Google. Right. Mm -hmm. Dear Google. <laughs> yeah, and so I would get still images from people's lives. And and then I, I put it all together, and I'm sort of like in Stargate, I'm, I'm Daniel. You know, you take all these bits and pieces, right? That's It was Daniel, right? He was, yeah. Wait, what's Star, what, Stargate? Stargate Universe, it was a show on television. Oh, you mean like the spinoff from the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never wanted to watch it until That like MacGyver is ago. the main, I think MacGyver was oh, the guy, main yeah. guy, right? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, so I can MacGyver, give me your paper clip and your bubble gum. <laughs> right. You know, tell your fortune. No, I don't want to do be a fortune teller. You know, people come up to me. I used to be. I used to call myself the cosmic hooker, because I would get emotionally oh, naked with people. Right. Right. I was like, yeah, no, that's not going to fly anymore. Now, have you ever taken on a charlatan? Like, just based on the fact that you're trying to be legitimate twenty four seven, and then you have these charlatans out here. Oh yeah. Have you ever had to take one on? And what's yes, that? I have. What's that like? Yeah, it's horrible. It is absolutely horrible because I'm going to tell you something. Words are spells. We spell words. And if I have somebody sitting in front of me and they say, tell me about my dead aunt Edna 
Suddenly, their dead Aunt Edna exists. They've spoken her into reality, which is where I became very, very, there have been a few people in my life recently who are pure sociopaths, pure sociopaths. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning that some of them are incredibly skilled. And I would give you names, but I was given a cease and desist order by an attorney. So <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay. Yeah. And when I'm sitting in front of somebody who wants to lie to me, mm -hmm. and I'm really in a moment, and I'm invested in that, and I have them back to back. Now, if you're just coming and sitting inside my, mm -hmm. if you're just coming in and sitting inside my house, mm -hmm. and we're doing a session, and you're lying to me, I'm gonna go. Yeah, you're lying to me. And I have said that to people. Why are you lying to me? Mm -hmm. But if I'm sitting in a group or I'm doing a show or I'm out in public and I have these people come up to me, tell me about my dead Aunt Edna. I always use my dead Aunt Edna. That's actually, Poor Edna. Yeah, poor Edna. Yeah, she's, she exists <laughs> right. now. Killed, yeah. thousand, <laughs> killed but, thousands of yeah, times. Yeah, and, and I've watched, and, and one of the people that I deeply admire is actually Derek Akora. He's, a, he's a, a, a psychic in the UK, and he went through a situation where I kind of watched that. I watched that whole thing unfold where somebody was trying to debunk him and call him a, sh a liar, and I was just like, oh, God, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. But we need to step aside from, as psychics, we need to step aside from our egos. And so that is what I have spent the last five years of my life doing. Stepping aside from what I think someone should do. If somebody comes and sits down in front of me, and this did happen, mm -hmm. and they have an abusive relationship, my first instinct is to say, get the hell out. Run. Do not stay with so-and-so. Mm -hmm. That's not for me to determine. When they're sitting in front of me and they ask me, what should I do? And, it, and what in their highest and best interest I have got to step aside from my own ego, what I think is best, and then lay it out for them as it is presented through me, mm -hmm. to me, through the oracles and through the voices that I hear. They're not telling me to boil bunnies, I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> Aaron gives me a thumbs up. Yes! Don't boil the bunnies. Um, <laughs> and so learning how to do that, learning how to listen to the voice of God and listen to the voice of a higher power mm -hmm. and as I had to sit and I keep going back to this one incident incident about four years ago when I really went God I, I really want to tell this person I wanted to interpret the images on the tarot cards or tarot mm -hmm. <laughs> tarot <laughs> right. cards and the oracles because I don't just use tarot and everything that I was hearing and seeing because I kept seeing and hearing that she needed or this I'm sorry, my client needed to stay in the situation that they were currently in, and it went against everything that I personally believed as a mm -hmm. survivor of domestic violence. Right. And so it's interesting that you should ask about that, that have you ever told someone what they wanted to what hear. they wanted to hear right. versus what you know just to get them away no because i i have to sleep at night right you i have, have a to and and not only that i mm -hmm. have a, a group of heavy duty guides that i work with that i really value mm -hmm. and i i do not want to lose their assistance well, have you ever been tempted by doing anything dark just based upon the pain that you've experienced Describe dark. Because well, like uh, working on the dark side of your powers in order to get some kind of every day. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, no. the temp. No, no temptation. Not even in the early days. When I was twelve, yeah, I studied witchcraft. I did Wicca, mm -hmm. and but Wicca is not witchcraft. Okay, Wicca is earth magic, and mm -hmm. as it harm none, do as you will. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of friends who are witches that are really brilliant. And there's, you know, there's a, it, it really has it's a lot to do with what you feel personally within yourself. Now, I draw the line at hurting people and small animals and things like that. I mean, it's just like, what mm -hmm. is a situational ethics? So what is dark? I'm not a practitioner of magic. 
Mm -hmm. um, I don't even really clear energy out of people like I used to. I used to really do, do a lot of aura cleansings. and. So you don't do any spell work, nothing like that? No, no, okay. I don't. I do a lot of prayer. Okay. I will do a lot of prayer, and mm -hmm. I have the White Light Express, and that is my baby. <laughs> I do. I have mm -hmm. done the White Light Express since 2001. And it was in October of 2001 that my very best friend and I, her name was Avis, is Avis, um, we would always say to each other, I'll pray for you if you pray for me. And so we just started doing this thing. It was part of our Zanga thing. And we more and more people said, will you pray for us too? Mm -hmm. And so I would prefer to just sit down and light a candle. And I always do. I like candles because candles, earth, air, fire, water, all the components. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a witch. You can be an airbender, an earthbender, a firebender. But those are the building blocks of everything that, that is, you know, again, is it a cult? Is it a cult when a priest lights a candle and mm -hmm. he says, you know, om pluribus nabisco platinum, <laughs> you know, right. e pluribum unum right. popcorn? I... But seriously, though, it's, it's, I, you know, Namieho Renge Kyo, Om Shri Ganesha Namo. I mean, all of these things that well, we what, say. What does that mean? Om Shri Ganesha Namo, it's, it's, a, it's an honoring of Ganesh, the Hindu god. Uh, he removes obstacles. He's okay. the elephant, the, the very right. beautiful. The Indian happy, elephant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love Ganesha. Okay. Yeah had a few conversations with him too honestly <laughs> okay let's fast forward here just for sake of time we're at the manresa castle you worked here we're going to talk more about that on the 25th with ron moorhead and uh barb shoop and there'll probably be some other surprises here but we did like a brief tour here i i did record some of that so maybe i'll play that as well but you took us to some really cool areas here and the staff was kind of blown away by how much you knew which, t I mean, you knew exactly where to walk, what switches to flip on here, and you're like, that switch doesn't work. I love this place. I do. Yeah, so there's a, a speakeasy down below. I don't even think they knew that. They didn't know that at all. And There's a lot that if you start talking to the people here in town, yeah, a lot of people don't even know that there was a train that ran through town up here. Yeah, there was a trolley. There was okay. a whole trolley system. Uh, there's so much about Port Townsend that, mm -hmm. I mean, because history is about those who remember, is for those mm -hmm. who remember it and who can write it down. And there's a lot of stuff. I mean, like, for instance, if you think about how the brothels downtown, if you, you can go into the old historic society downtown mm -hmm. and you will see where they said if a fire happened, they had specific places that, you know, don't worry about these places because they, those were houses of ill repute. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about... The Palace you know. Hotel. That's a big one, right? Uh, no. No? No. Miss Kitty up on the second or third <laughs> floor? No? Okay. You know, speaking of the Palace Hotel, no. But <clears throat> there's there were other houses all up and down the, okay. the, the street uh, behind Water Street. And okay. they, they were marked. Don't go here if there's a huge fire <clears throat> because, you know. Okay. Why, why do hookers need help? Mm -hmm. I'll let you tell people here why they should come on the 25th because I kind of explained it at nauseum. But you, you explain why they should come to the Manresa and spend the time here. I mean, you can only say so much without showing them videos here, but you spent time here. Why should people come? Because if they want to have an authentic experience, yeah. if this place does not play favorites. It does not play favorites. You will have an authentic experience here. If nothing else, you're going to have a great time. But I know, in fact, I just saw an orb just now. Just really? Right through there. Yes. Okay. There is so much here. There is a portal here of an in and out. It flows. And I mean, some really amazing people, very powerful people have come and tried to shut it down, including myself. I worked here. I did, I, you know, I loved it here and I've had some really terrifying moments here and some really exciting moments and i'm skeptical as heck i'm skeptical af <laughs> i mean people come in and right. they're like oh my god there's a ghost in my house i'm like no no there isn't okay so, yeah but they will have an authentic experience and to vouch for that peter your husband next door here sitting next to you on the right yeah, he's had a pretty good. incredible encounter here as well and maybe just maybe we'll get him to tell what happened with the babushka woman 
Babushka woman. We haven't seen anything here yet, but we're staying up on the on the 25th and 26th. We'll be on the second floor. And you said the second floor in particular. If you could book a so floor. so haunted. I think the second floor is literally the most haunted floor. And okay. I, mean, I think because it's like, you know, right between. It's like the creamy filling in the Oreo. <laughs> oh, yes, it's a, the liminal st- space. <laughs> okay, we're staying in the cream room. Yeah, okay. I, that's, that's actually the, when I came up here... When I was here with Preston Massey, the original, um, he was the original uh, general manager mm-hmm. and part of the family that owned the building beforehand. Mm-hmm. I was doing, I was having George Nori come out. George Nori actually stayed here. Right. And um, and I was thinking about having a banquet here. I, I was shoved. I wasn't even working here. And when that happened, and I, I just literally had, I this, this entity came up behind me and shoved me. Wow. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, that was I was my first experience, and I went, okay. Wow. There's definitely something going on here. It was like, hey, we're here. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was just sort of not in your face, but, you know, shove you in your back. Okay, and you uh, hand me some cards here. Supernaturalpassport.com, that's your website? Yeah, I have a Patreon, okay. um, and we're really going to ramp it up here. I closed it down for August because I was I was in Texas. I was taking care of some family okay. business out there, and I'm back. I'm back. She's back. She's back. Supernaturalpassport.com. And what can they find there? Well, I do weekly readings, and uh, there's different levels there of joy and laughter and mm-hmm. scary stuff, interesting stuff, intriguing stuff. And I, I do kind of a weekly podcast there, too. It's a vlog. Do you do readings over long distances? You bet. Okay. Oh, yeah. So people can call in. Yep. And you I charge them Skype. by the hour. Yeah, it's $99 a reading, actually. Okay. Whether it lasts three hours or an hour. Mm-hmm. I mean, typically they last about an hour and a half. But I've, I've had some cases where I've okay. had people come in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Free show. October 25th. I don't know if you can stick around to the 26th. There's a big Halloween party. It's 10 bucks to walk in the door. You don't have to stay here. Um, Great. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right, that was Sarah Nash and the reverb monster that got into her microphone. I did everything on my end to smother that darned old little reverb attached to her into the mic. I'll look into that one so that doesn't happen twice. Maybe it was the location that happened to be at the Manresa Castle where you can show up. Free event from like 7 p.m. to, well, not like, from 7 to about 10.30 or 11 p.m. October 25th. Manresa Castle Port Towns in Washington. Book a room there. Big old haunted castle. New owners. New fun. Ron Moorhead talking about UFOs, ghosts, and aliens. Sarah Nash and Barb Shoup. And some special guests. That's the 25th. And then, of course, the 26th is the big Halloween party. So you want to book two nights at the Manresa Castle. We are. Second floor. They called it the cream filling. I guess that's where I'm staying. Also, go to YouTube. Strange Brow Radio. Now on YouTube. I'm downloading episodes. And, oh, I'm redoing the website, too. We need a new website. So, building a new website. Get ready for that. That's it for me, folks. We'll see you in a week. Oh, and I'll see you in the trees.